This was meant to be a winter project, but the days are getting longer and spring doesn't seem too far away. But back last summer, I bought a job lot of used batteries from eBay. I probably paid a bit over the odds at £2 a battery or 50p per cell in this case, uh, but I think they've got even more expensive now. The job lot consisted of 40 batteries, of which uh, 35, I think it was, was this type. The uh, HP OA04 notebook battery, and this contains four 18650s. And uh, these have been easy enough to open. I've obviously already uh, cracked that one. Uh, and as you can see, there are four 18650s inside there, covered in tape. So I'm trying to be as responsible as possible. The plastics are all going in the recycle bin and the uh, battery management system, the old one here inside that laptop battery, well, that's being removed as well and sent off for recycling. So it just uh, means I've got this nickel strip, which I need to uh, tidy up, and the tape, which uh, sadly goes in the regular bin. Now, once the cells have been broken out of their packs, well, I check the voltage and uh, oh 3.9 that's excellent and again yet yeah, these all look to be like really good cells but even those cells that are less than a volt i've been coaxing back into life by uh, putting them on my bench power supply what i call it my rui deng dc to dc converter and charging them at really low levels 50 milliamps something like that for quite a long period of time until they come up to three volts and then i can use my standard charger so I've been using my Lytocala Engineer Lee 300, which is uh, attached to my lead acid bank here, charged, of course, by solar. And I've been using this mainly for two reasons. One, I had it already. And secondly, it does have the function where it will charge these cells, discharge them, and charge them back up again, and tell me the capacity. And they also show you the internal resistance as well. Um, so 3.9 volts and 104 uh, milliohms resistance it's saying there. So put another one in and we can see on this side, it's a bit faint, uh, 119 milliohms, 3.9 volts. And if I press and hold the mode button and change it to discharge, well, this will, uh, like I said, it will charge them up, it will discharge them, um, log that capacity and then charge them back up to 4.2 volts. Now you'll notice here that the Lito Carla does only charge at 500 milliamps and in fact it discharges at the same rate and uh, that's okay for me I'm not too fussed about that I've already set a benchmark with all my 18650s their uh, capacities that I've rated them at has always been at that 500 milliamp discharge rate and ultimately I'm just creating a benchmark for myself so that I can uh, organize these cells correctly into packs I don't need to worry if my capacity is any greater or less than somebody else's capacity because quite frankly I haven't got their cells. But of course, charging at 500 milliamps and discharging at 500 milliamps does take its time, so you can tell why it's taken me quite some time to process all these cells. So here are some of those cells that I've already tested, and it doesn't take a genius to realize that I actually have two different types of cells here. They all came out of the same HP OA04 laptop batteries, but actually, as you can see, two distinct types here. The one on the left, the deeper orange with a purple top, and the one on the right, which is more of a peachy color, I'd say. Um, so let's have a look at their data sheets. So here we have the data sheet, and this is an LG product, um, and it's got a nominal capacity of 2,800 milliamp hours, or a minimum of 2,700 milliamp hours. That's excellent, but interestingly, it claims that these can be charged up to 4.3 volts, um, which is a little bit higher than I'm going to be charging them. 
So I think I've correctly identified this deeper orange here with the uh, purple ring as the Panasonic or Sanyo UR18650Z T and as you can see here it's got a similar figure minimum 2700 milliamp hours and typical 2800 milliamp hours clearly HP bought two different products but made sure they had the same capacity so after these cells have been through the process of charging, discharging and recharging to find their true capacities, um, they've sat in a box for, well, a few months now actually, and uh, that's really important because I want to check the self-discharge. So uh, let's just try these two here now, and that one is sat at 4.16 volts, and this one is 4.18 volts, and that's well above my 4.1 volt threshold. Of course, they were charged to 4.2 volts, and if they self-discharge to 4.1 volts or below, well, I've decided they're not good enough for me, and they've gone off to the recyclers. I will group all the good cells into seven packs of 20. Uh, so I'll have a 7S20P pack. Now, unfortunately, there aren't enough uh, of these orange good cells um, that I need. I need 140, of course, for 7S20P. So I might have to find some other cells of different colours. But obviously, you know, I'll hide them in the middle. Now I am seeing an average cell capacity of 2,500 milliamp hours or 2.5 amp hours. So each group will have a total of about 50 amp hours at 4.2 volts. So doing the calculation at 29.4 volts for a 7S pack, well 29.4 times 50 is 1,470 watt hours or 1.4 kilowatt hours now i won't be charging my uh, packs all the way up to 29.4 volts but i do think that we could have a usable kilowatt hour of capacity here and for my shed that's huge now it makes sense to use these 18650 holders which are cheaply available from ebay and it's likely i'll take some inspiration from pete over at the diy powerwalls youtube channel to wire up my 20p packs I'm also going to make more than a hat tip to Paul Kennett and his small blocks design by using a similar idea to him, using a DIN rail to mount my 20p packs, and I've already 3D printed a bracket which I think will work quite nicely. I'll need to think carefully about a method to balance these cells. If my packs aren't completely balanced, both in capacity and internal resistance, there's a good chance that over time they will drift in voltage from each other. I'll need a method to monitor that and potentially use a system to actively balance the groups. So that's the plan. Over the coming weeks, I'll be building packs, looking at how best to wire them up and connect the packs together. So hopefully you're keen to follow my journey and you enjoy this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.